Knitting with double pointed needles? Here are five tips to make things easier, neater, and safer for your knitting. All right, let's go. Tip one, tug at the transfer. All right, so when you're moving from one needle to another, you wanna make sure that you tug on your working yarn. Okay, so let's see what that means. All right, so I'm gonna move on to my next needle over here, do a transfer. So here's my working yarn. I'm gonna go around my naked needle and knit into that first stitch. All right, so here's my first stitch and I just wanna give a bit of a tug just to make sure the tension is nice and snug between these two needles. All right, after I've done that, I can continue knitting as normal across this needle, okay? So that's important because when you are transferring from needle to needle, you wanna keep that tension even, okay? You don't wanna leave kind of a loose gap between each needle. So here's what happens when you don't tug at your transfer. At each transfer point, there's this very loose sort of jog that happens. It sort of runs down our whole work, right? So let's take a look at the next join over here. Here's our join and you can see that there's this sort of loose, you know, strand of yarn that happens, right? Here's our next join and again, a very loose strand of yarn, right? The rest of our work is very even, but where the join is, there's this sort of loose thing that happens, right? So you can avoid this by tugging at your transfers. Tip two, protect your stitches. If you plan on bringing your knitting with you, like let's say you wanna pop it in your bag so you can knit during your commute, you'll wanna introduce stitch protectors to your needle. So you can see that because your double pointed needles don't have a stopper on each end, it's really easy for your knitting to just fall off like this. Ah, disaster. So to prevent this from happening, you can put a temporary stopper onto your needles. You can buy official ones that look like this. These are from Amazon, they're a couple bucks and I'll throw a link to them in the description box. Now the other option is to make your own. A rubber band is all you need. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take a rubber band and wrap it around the tip of your needle, all right? So I'm kind of going in like an inch down from the tip and I'm just wrapping this guy around my needle. Here we go, okay? So it's pretty secure, it's kind of tacky. And look, when I try and push my stitches, it's not gonna happen, not happening, right? Because I have this rubber band stopper preventing my stitches from falling off. Pretty cool, right? So you're gonna need like two rubber bands per needle because we still got this side to contend with. So here's my other rubber band. This one's a huge one. I don't even know where I got that one from, but this is a monster rubber band. And I'm just gonna wrap it around a couple times. And here we go, makeshift stoppers. So now I can wrap more rubber bands around each needle and then I don't have to worry about my stitches falling off my needle. So there you go. Remember to protect your stitches with fancy protectors or with plain old rubber bands. Tip three, bamboo or wood is good. If you're wondering what kind of double pointed needles you should get, consider bamboo or wooden needles. I find bamboo or wooden needles are better for beginners because they have kind of a natural surface drag that holds onto stitches better than metal or plastic needles. Tip four, trap a stitch marker if you want to. So previously I said that you didn't need to use a stitch marker to mark the beginning and end of your round on double pointed needles because you've got this handy little remnant of your long tail cast on, right? This little tail kind of tells you where the beginning and end of your round is, right? It's right here. So I know that it's right between these two needles, right? However, there are some situations in which, you know, maybe you wanna put in a stitch marker uh, you don't want to just, you know, knit past the beginning and end of your round. Maybe you're doing a complicated stitch pattern or something. You just want this guy in there. So you can put the stitch marker right on your needle, right? Just like that. But you'll notice that if I turn my work at all, oopsie, my stitch marker just comes right off. So that's because when you put your stitch marker on your needle, there's no, you know, other stitch on the other side of your stitch marker to prevent it from just popping off, right? So what you can do is put on your stitch marker and we're gonna steal one of these stitches from our right needle and pop it onto our left needle. And by doing that, we'll trap our stitch marker in place. So here we go. I'm gonna move my stitches up close to my needle and get my left needle out and just grab that stitch. 
All right, and I'm gonna push my stitches into the middle of my needle so they don't fall off. And voila, you can see that now my stitch marker is trapped in place because we've got this new stitch over on this needle, okay? So you can do that. You can just move your stitches around, take a stitch from this needle and pop it on this needle. You know, I can redistribute the stitches however I want, okay? So that's a really easy way to add in a stitch marker into your knitting. Tip five, make an invisible join. So I've got two samples here, and this sample was joined just normally. We kind of knit in the round on our double pointed needles. And you can see here, if we zoom in, you can see that there's kind of like a bit of a gap, right? And it's not terrible. You can fix it by weaving in your tail end of your long tail with a tapestry needle and tightening up that gap. But another way that you can achieve a really nice seamless join is by doing like an invisible join. And you can see on this sample here, there's really like no jog or a gap where we joined in the round. It's just a really nice seamless join. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that next. So let's get into it. So to make this invisible join, you're gonna cast on one extra stitch than what you need. So for example, if you need 30 stitches, you would cast on 31 stitches. That extra stitch is gonna get absorbed into our join, so don't worry about it. It's not gonna throw off your stitch count. Um, that stitch will disappear. So you're going to push your stitches on your right and left needle up close to the tip, okay, of both of your needles. Here we go. All right, now we're going to steal the last stitch on our right needle and bring it onto our left needle, okay? So I'm going to go into the stitch and take it off my right needle. Okay, so I've got my hand, whoops, everything's falling around. I've got my hand holding onto my uh, long tail cast on right here, right here, because I don't want it to kind of unravel and for my stitch to come undone. So I'm just kind of holding on to it right now with my thumb right here. Okay, so what's gonna happen now is you're going to take this stitch here, okay? The second stitch on your left needle, this guy right here, and bring it over this stitch that you just stole. Okay, so that sounds kind of complicated. I'm gonna use a separate needle for this. I think it's just a little easier. So I'm gonna go into this stitch just like that, and I'm gonna bring it over this stitch. All right, so watch me go. Let's see if I can't do this. Just gonna bring it over. There we go, all right. I've just brought that second stitch over my first stitch and now you can see that I've kind of joined in the round, right? But that's not the end of it. I'm gonna take my working yarn and just give it a bit of a tug, okay? I'm gonna take back this first stitch and bring it back to my right needle. Okay, so I'm gonna just grab it and bring it over. Okay, bring it back over to my right needle. And now I am ready to work my first round. Okay, so now everything is joined in the round, you can see, right? One of my stitches is actually down here. Okay, because I took that stitch and I brought it over my first stitch, okay? So I've actually decreased one stitch. So that's where our extra stitch has gone. It's gone down here, right here. And it's actually what's creating that nice join on our round, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna start knitting in the round, okay? So this would be my round one, and I'm just gonna start knitting as normal. As you knit, you'll find that that join looks really nice and really neat and even. So there you go, five tips to make double pointed knitting easier, neater, and safer. Protect your stitches. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna stay in touch, then do subscribe. I'm Davina from sheepandstitch.com. Thanks for watching and happy knitting.